Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zs Caravall from ZK Richard, and I'm here at the NFL TAC meetings in uh, Denver, Colorado with Kevin Wittenberg. You run the sports and entertainment practice at Extreme. I do. Yeah, and uh, uh, this is your first time on with me. Yes. And uh, so uh, great to have you. Glad uh, to so be here. A little background on yourself and how you got into this. Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm actually coming on 19 years with Extreme Networks, believe it or not. Um, had a little bit of software and security background before that, but um, started out um, in a regular sales position and had the opportunity to work on a few stadiums and just sort of found my love in that space yeah. and have been doing nothing but that for the last 12 years. Well, that sounds like a great job. Who doesn't like that? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we're here at TAC. Uh, any thoughts from the show? Did you learn anything here? Key takeaways? Oh, gosh. I mean, AI everywhere, connectivity everywhere, right? Yeah. That, that's the talk of the town uh, for this week. And um, it's really interesting when we come here, we're, we're, we get, you get focused on your own technology sometimes, but to see all the different use cases, applications for player health and for football operations and the thing that really moves the game forward. And, uh, you know, comparing that and contrasting that against the, the fundamentals that we can do better is always a fun thing. Yeah. In fact, I was talking to AWS about this yesterday. They created a digital twin for players that they can use to model the way they run for injuries and things. And I was thinking about yeah. the amount of data they collect and then how, like, the important the network is today because in fact um, in yeah. the opening session in the morning they showed a lot of the future initiatives VIP fan experience optical tracking things like that and it all runs over the network right so yeah. you know from your perspective as the, one of the network providers for a lot of these stadiums yep. I mean that's just got to be music to yours right now absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah as everything goes into the cloud and you know there's more of a focus on AI the, the network continues to be the plumbing right yeah. we, we continue to move all of that data um, and so it's an exciting time for us as our, the demand and mission criticality for what we do, uh, both for the fans and for the operation, continues to grow. You know, it, it, it just, uh, you know, it amplifies the pressure, but it also makes it a lot more fun. I just got back from Extreme Connect yep. uh, in Paris, and um, one, one of my key takeaways there was that uh, no one does complicated Wi-Fi better than Extreme. Oh, thank and, you. And of course, uh, stadiums are maybe the epitome of complicated Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, talk to me about why this, why are stadiums so difficult to put Wi-Fi in and why are you guys so good at it? Well, um, <laughs> I'll go in reverse order, I guess. Okay. I mean, I think the reason that we're good at it is incredibly thorough planning and support after the fact, right? So. Um, we had an opportunity back in 2012 to work with our first team. And at that point, it was just like, how do we get our phones working again, right? Basic connectivity, you wanted to have coverage and signal everywhere. Um, and as we've talked about over the last few seconds, you know, the growing need, you continue to push the limits and refine and grow and refine and grow. And so we're on design iteration standard six or so right now. And um, as the tech- oh, of, of stadium Wi-Fi. Of our methodology, methodology for stadium yeah, Wi-Fi, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yep. And uh, you know, we've got you know that's also included Wi-Fi Wi-Fi four to Wi-Fi five, Wave one and Wave two to six, and now six E, yeah. and and uh, we're on the precipice of seven. So, it's a very exciting time, and each of those new techs give us the opportunity for new you know technology as we refine that deployment method. Um, why is it so hard? I mean, every building is very different, right? If you look at the simplicity of a more of a college style venue where it's one continuous bowl going top for bottom, um, you know, from row one to the highest row in the building, the, the consistency in that um, it simplifies things a little bit. As you get into the NFL buildings and, um, and in particularly older buildings, you yeah. know, we, we work with uh, in environments where the structure of the building um, is over 100 years old. Right? I mean, I, we've- Those we've, were not designed for Wi-Fi. <laughs> they were not, they were not. I, I'm not exaggerating. One building that we worked on, the drawings that they first gave us when we were designing it were hand-drawn with ruler and Ooh. pen yeah. <laughs> or, or pencil, right? Yeah. Um, so you have to figure out how to retrofit technology into these really unique environments. And as they grow and build, and a lot of stadiums are doing construction now, you know, they don't often redo the entire building, although sometimes they build fresh, right? They're yeah. adding a wing or a level or, and, and so then you have the complexity of how to route and make the new and old coexist. Yeah, and uh, it, I think it's no coincidence that when you look at all the kind of iconic stadiums, the old ones, Wrigley, Fenway, Lambeau, right? Those are all uh, LA Memorial. LA Memorial is uh, a yeah, great one. Berlin yeah. Stadium, London Stadium, they're all yeah. extreme deployments. Yeah, they are. You know, they are. and so, I, you know, I think it's a coincidence. So, congratulations. In fact, one of your customers, uh, 
uh, Brian Child, the Red Sox, showed me yep. the, when you did the site survey there, he gave me a book that you treated almost every access point like its own site survey because we because Fenway's so complicated, right? Those yep. all the you know, yep. handrails and stuff. Yeah, and so so anyways, let's get back to this event. Now I know uh, uh, Extreme did a presentation yesterday on Wi-Fi. Uh, 67 yep. uh, analytics, things like that. So some of the highlights from that presentation. Oh gosh, I mean, there are particularly 6E, um, and from 6E to 7, there's some things, but they're, they're not as um, significant. But very specifically with 6E, introduced the six gigahertz spectrum. Yep. Uh, and I spent a significant portion of my life in the Boston area. And every time you're stuck in traffic in Boston, there's a lane mover and it moves the, the, the uh, the commuter lane in and it moves moving. the commuter yeah, lane yeah, out. Yeah. They have one in DC as well. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of where we are with Wi-Fi right now is they're introducing a new lane and that new lane is six gigahertz, right? So the, the, the fundamental physics challenge of Wi-Fi has always been not enough channels to do everything we want to do. And we're adding that lane, we're adding more channels. So six gigahertz is the most important underpinning to both 6E and Wi-Fi 7. Um, and we're starting to see the benefits of those, right? So now that we have more channels, it's, it's faster, it's more consistent, it's more reliable. And so the, the number of and type of applications you can layer on top gets a lot more exciting. Yeah, and you also talked, uh, and, and by the way, I do think the opening up that 60 gigahertz channel is gonna be game changing for Wi-Fi. We haven't really had a new channel opened up well, since five, like which was yeah. uh, 20 years ago, or a long something. time ago. Yeah, and yeah. so just uh, you know, I guess uh, if you want to use the road analogy, every once in a while you got to expand your highways. Yep. And, and this is no different. Now you also talked about the analytics product in that session, right? And some yes. updates there. And so, what's new with analytics? Uh, analytics we try to evolve every year um, and th there's some th simple things going on this year that are setting the foundation for the future um, but most of the focus and growth and evolution of the product has been in the location information so um, we've gotten um, more advanced and to be able to uh, provide information back to the business development side, the partnership side, the marketing side of the house to look at where people are spending time. Um, and so that can help them in sponsorship activation and quantification. Um, and it can also help the operation side of the house, right? To know where people are spending time so that they can put their staff in the right location at the right time, right? Oh, right. And so yeah, we, yeah, so if you notice a lot of people at one in a couple of concession areas and few people in another, you can move them around, something exactly. like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, and, and every venue is gonna treat that differently, right? If you have a venue that is sold out every single game for the next, <laughs> you know, has a 10-year season ticket waiting list, they have maximum staff the whole time. But for teams that have, you know, if, if a certain team is in or a concert is playing, their attendance tends to vary, that information becomes really helpful for them to staff their you know, full-time employees the right way. Um, one of the other interesting things, because the, um, the, one of the foundational elements of the product has always been baselining, right? How do we compare at a league level? How do they compare club A to club B, mm. right? How do they compare week one to week two? And so um, news and weather has always been an interesting fact. Um, so um, we, we have, um, we, we've introduced a timeline concept where if something interesting happens on the field, that's noted, right? So if you yeah. see a spike in bandwidth, that might be people sharing that experience that they had on social, right? Um, that piece is not new. The piece that we've added to it has been weather. It's, it's, it sounds really simple, but if, you have, if you're looking over a season recap and you see that you had a really low game, and if you're looking at that data in December, it's pretty easy to forget that there was a torrential downpour in October. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so being able to say, no, that, that wasn't a network issue. That was actually yeah. something that happened. You know, Mother Nature took its course and we saw a drop in adoption and the network's still healthy, right? Yeah. That allows them to look back over those types of trends um, and in some cases there again going back to staffing where do people go if it started raining yeah. right and how do we staff for that for the next time that you know somebody might enter uh, empty onto the concourse or such yeah and you know I just uh, spoke with Aaron Ar uh, Mendiola the deputy CIO yep. of the NFL and he was saying that the the ability to correlate uh, spikes in network traffic to events in the game when touchdowns are scored, yeah. things like that, has really allowed them to understand the dynamics of what people do, you know, what fans do, how they react to certain events in the stadium and things like that. So yeah. that's a lot of really, it's a, it's, what's fascinating about the Extreme uh, Analytics tool is it delivers a lot of business insights from network data. Yes. Historically, I don't think most CIOs would have thought much about network data. 
True. Right? right? And, yes. and But now I think it's a critical part of business operations. Well, I would say, you know, in a, in a traditional IT sense, mostly they only thought of network data as in the health of the network. Yeah. How many, right, right. How well, many packets yeah. are we pushing? How many people are connected, right? And one of the things that's been really innovative But you know, for network us, good, bad, but you had no idea what that meant to the business. Right. It was yeah. red light, yeah. green light, yellow, uh, I'm not sure, yellow yeah, light, yeah. right? And so now taking that and applying it to some of the location things that I was talking about, as well as um, application data, you know, what are your fans doing mm -hmm. while they're there? Are they engaging with you on their social experience? Um, or are they using some other provider's app while they're in your stadium, right? And that can allow you to improve again on the app experience or know um, when to start investing on the marketing side of the house in say, you know, Snapchat is pretty mature now, right? But a few years ago, if you looked at the top social applications, teams weren't, they didn't have their marketing interns spending time with Snapchat, yeah. right? Or now uh, TikTok, right? Like, but helping educate the marketing team to say, okay, we've heard about this new app. When should we actually start investing in it? Well, when are your fans investing in it, yeah. right? And, and everybody knows that the older guys like us are on Facebook and Instagram, <laughs> but the kids are coming up with all these new yeah. things, right? Yeah. So uh, you got to keep up with, the, t with yeah. the 20s and 30s in college, especially in that college demographic. Um, and if you look at um, a, a concert, for example, you take a venue that has an NFL team, right? And you'll see that the, the application profile of what their fans are doing is X. And then you look at a soccer game in the same venue and you'll see that the application profile is actually different. It's why. And so if you're, again, trying to reach those fans on their platform, knowing where they're at is really yeah. important. And then have a concert in that venue and that could change if it's George Strait versus Taylor Swift versus, you know, some, you know, more modern music artist, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Now, one of the interesting aspects of the six gig spectrum is that you start pushing uh, gig Wi-Fi. Yes. Which we've never done before. Yep. Right. Even though theoretically, I guess. Theoretically. You yeah. Yeah. Now, um, are you seeing that drive in a wired refresh? Because uh, never before in my history of networking has wi a Wi-Fi upgrade dictated it. But I've talked to a few uh, stadium operators that are looking at 2.5 and 5 gig, sure. like the multi gig. Yeah. Just in preparation for the fact that, you know, the, the wired network actually could be the bottleneck here. It could be, yeah. I mean, I, I think um, going back to channels, right? If you do all of the, uh, I'm not quite smart enough to do all yeah. of the physics of the math of the channel width equal a certain amount of bandwidth. Um, yeah, but Coleman I've, I've seen the numbers. Yeah. yeah, we needed David Coleman to yeah. help us with that. Um, but the, you know, if, if if you, I know if you go back to the math, the, the the number of channels that you're using in a venue in the bowl, in order to provide good service, is still the limiting factor, right? So you're probably not hitting a plus gig port now. But switching ha tends to have a higher life cycle than Wi-Fi, APs. Yep. And so you, people are definitely in the mindset of future-proofing and planning for that. Now, everything is going on the network, like we talked about. So there are uh, many other things that are hitting the network now with AV systems in particular that are going to do that. And so we're seeing okay. a lot more push with plus gig ports for the, the other things that are connecting to the network in the potential for future Wi-Fi. Uh, capabilities as it grows and in the back office where the channel environment is cleaner you can get to those throughput areas or you know potentially in the sweet space but six gigahertz is still new we're still learning with it and we're yeah. we're definitely pushing it in that direction um, the other thing on your question about switching that often people forget is poe um, right. we have had advanced higher capable PoE, uh, 90 or so watts of PoE available for some time, but the access points um, and the horsepower in the access points wasn't requiring those higher rates of PoE. As we go to Wi-Fi 7, um, a lot of manufacturers are requiring that more than, and that's an industry statement, yeah. not an extreme statement, but it's something I would say that any network or um, finance person should be mindful of, is to have an awareness to the PoE requirement of the switch for the AP and make sure they match, right? Because yeah. the bigger APs, the more powerful APs require more power. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. And uh, and uh, so just with the partnership with the NFL in general, 
What's next for you guys? Are they looking at your AI products? Are they, you just announced a bunch of them in Connect. Yeah. Uh, where's this, uh, what do you think is the next phase of the relationship between you two? So we, we did just renew with the NFL. Yeah. Uh, we're excited about that. I don't know if that's public or not yeah. yet, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but we, do, we, we are still um, moving forward with the NFL and the next generation. I, 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 you will see as we continue, we've announced um, a number of refreshes to our overall network management platform. Um, and as we refresh the network management platform, as will we refresh refresh the analytics platform and we're working um, hand in hand with the NFL to make sure that as we evolve that product set that it's exactly what they're looking for and obviously AI gets infused in all of it right yeah. so um, trying to get more predictive in nature of you know what we expect to see from the network okay and last question for all you uh, business owners out there that uh, hotels airports places I go with terrible Wi-Fi uh, <laughs> A couple of pieces of advice. How do, why is Wi-Fi so bad and how do they make it better? Gosh, I mean, it, it, it truly all comes down to planning, right? I yeah. mean, just our sports and entertainment team is 30 people strong. And about 12 of those are on the front end of the sales cycle, designing, de deploying, and then the, the others are on the support factor, right? So these environments change a lot. The more things that happen at your venue, the more change there are. People show up with all things that are Wi-Fi enabled and you have to be ready to adapt to those changes, right? AI will help with yeah. that. But having the, the people there that are coordinating the vendors that are coming in to make sure that they're ready for it. But, um, y y you know, as Wi-Fi changes, definitely having a modern Wi-Fi infrastructure is yeah. super important. We always balance coverage and capacity. So we're standing here in a hallway. We're, you're not needing high density coverage in the hallway, right? Down the hallway is a large convention center. We need dense yeah. coverage there to make sure that everybody can do anything they want to while they're in the conference room, right? So coverage and capacity, delicate balance, making sure that you're coordinating with the people that are coming in um, and that you have a staff that's knowledgeable about planning for rogue devices, right? You have your network and then all the other things that come in are rogues and you need to you know, be able to manage those. All right, so, uh, but the big key is planning here. Planning, yeah, planning, yeah, planning, planning, planning. Yeah, that's what right. we started with and that's what we end with. <laughs> uh, all right, anything else you want to add? Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Oh, yeah, thanks. it's been a great week yeah. and it's a pleasure to talk. Yeah, no, thanks yeah. for being on. And so on behalf of Kevin Wittenberg from Extreme Networks, I'm Zia Scaravalli from CK Research Team. Thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast.